In the previous two videos, we learned how to add validation rules and display error messages. In this video, let's explore how to add custom validations to form fields. As an example, let's say we want to prevent users from entering admin at example.com as an email address since it is reserved for internal use only. To add a custom validation, we add a key value pair to the options object passed into the register function. The key is called validate, and this is going to be a function. The function automatically receives the field value as an argument. Within the function, you can add one or more conditions and return true if the validation passes or return a string message if the validation fails. For our admin email example, here's how we write the rule. Return field value is not equal to admin at example.com or enter a different email address. This means that as long as the email field value is not admin at example.com, validation rule is satisfied. If the value is admin at example.com, set the error message as enter a different email address. If we go back to the browser, with admin at example.com already filled, click submit, we see the error message being displayed. Enter a different email address. And this works independently of the regex pattern validation. If the format is invalid, we still see the format validation message. Finally, what I would like to highlight is that validate can also be an object with multiple rules as key value pairs. Let's convert the current validate function into an object. Cut the function, specify an object, and within the object, we specify key value pairs. As key, we specify a name for the validation rule. Let's call it not admin. And the value will be the same function from before. And since we have an object now, we can add another validation rule. Let's assume we also want to check for blacklisted domains. The rule name is not blacklisted. And this is a function. It receives the email field value, which we can use in our condition. If the value does not end with baddomain.com, pass the validation. If it does, return a message. This domain is not supported. Save the file and let's test it out in the browser. Admin at baddomain.com, submit, and we see the error message. As you can see, React Hook form makes it really simple to not only add HTML validations, but also custom validations. Of course, there is more to learn about validations, but for this section on the fundamentals, this is a great start. Specify a validate function for a single custom rule, or specify a validate object for multiple custom rules. With that, we conclude the fundamentals section of the series on React Hook form. Let's summarize what we've learned so far. To register a field with React Hook form, we use the register method. This automatically starts tracking the form state. To submit the form, we use the handle submit method assigned to the on submit event and pass in our submit function. For validation, we can pass options to the register function. These can be HTML validations or custom validations using the validate function. In both cases, the form state is updated and we access the errors object with the correct key to display the error message to the user. I hope these 10 videos have given you a good understanding of what React Hook form is 
and how it simplifies dealing with forms in React. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next section where we will learn more about enhancing our YouTube form.